Let's continue our introduction to Copernicus by looking at UVs and UV randomization. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon, so you can grab it on there if you're interested. But let's go ahead and dive in and drop down a copnet, dive inside, and one of the most common ways that we're gonna be using UVs or looking at UVs for randomization is gonna be with the tile pattern node. So let's just drop that down, and we can select our little tiles right there and select UV in the bottom right of that node. And now we can see our UVs in our actual viewport. So what we have here is a bunch of different UVs just basically splayed out where our tiles are. So we have all these different squares and this goes through the same no matter what, if we change the different types here, we can come down to this UV and we'll get a UV layout that is fitted to our object here. And what we have is basically just, if we drop down a UV map here, we have the same thing here. It's just a vector that goes from 0, 0 to 1, 1. This is in, this is in space here, mapped to our, our square. So it goes from negative 1, negative 1 to 1, 1. Uh, but this runs from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Same as your UV space inside of Houdini. So like with your like texture space that is as far as like when you're starting to lay out your your individual uv islands and stuff if you were to unwrap your models so basically have the same thing here with our tile pattern node and we can use this to our advantage if we want to just randomize some things we can drop down a uv transform and we can wire in our uvs into here set the display flag there. And then it's kind of hard to see what's going on here. Well, or kind of hard to visualize, I guess. So we can map something to this, but let's just look at what happens to our actual UVs first. So if I go ahead and select this rotation and I start to rotate this, you see that everything's rotating all the exact same. And the reason for that is we have this little seed option down here. So we can use this ID, because each one of these tiles has a different ID. We can pipe that into our seed, and now you see that we have a bunch of random rotations going on the more that we crank this up. And we can mess around with our scaling as well if we want to, all these different settings. If we don't like this seed, this is a seed referring to how the randomization is happening. We can change this and we get a different seed for our randomization. So different than this seed that we're piping in, but still a seed that can help you get some control over your randomization here. So if we wanna view this a little bit easier, we can drop down a image sample. We can wire in our UVs for this. And then I can drop down, this is a recipe that I've set up. All it is is a, it's called a UV grid. Um, all this is is just a file node just set to the default is set to this butterfly image. I've just set it to this checkerboard image, which comes default with Houdini. If you just type this into the file name, you can set that uh, to, you can set that up yourself and just save that as a recipe. And then you're all set up with that. So nothing too complex there, but now you can see a little bit more of what's going on. Still a little weird. I'm just seeing what this looks like just because the the size of this actual grid but we can come in here and we can mess around let's up the rotation here you can change the max scaling and now you can see a little bit easier as what's going on here maybe we scale them all up that's not really working as i anticipated uh, but you see what's going on here. We're getting some randomization going on, but this doesn't apply just to the tile pattern node. So we can do the same thing with what we set up before with our stamp points. So let's drop down a SOP setup again. This is just a recipe that I've created that just creates these nodes for us. I'm gonna delete that last one, dive in here. Let's create a grid here. We'll set this to the X, Y plane and we will make it a two by two grid just so it matches what we have inside of our our cop net and we can drop down a scatter and let's set this to like 100 or something like that and we can come in here and we can drop down a stamp points 
wire this result into the points here, and you can see that we get something different. But if we look at our UVs, we have these actual UV islands that are being created, or these UVs that are being created for us. So we still have an ID for each one of these individual ones. So we can take our same transform here. We can pipe in our UVs here and our ID into the seed. And you can see that we get something different. Let's just scale this back a little bit. But you can see that we get, instead of our you know, similar or same rotations on everything, we can start to change that rotation and we can get some randomization going on here. And again, we could just pipe this into here as well for our image sample. And we can preview that with our checkerboard image if we wanted to. So we can also use our ID attribute. So if we want to do an attribute randomize, if I set this to a uniform discrete, that's going to give us a, a, um, an integer, not a float. So we can randomize this if we just set this to copy this parameter, come into the randomize and set the max value to paste relative references. Now we're going to get a random value based on our point number. So we can start to lower the rotation here. And you can see how that affects as that we start to bring that up. So get some different things there, but what if we were just creating our own, you know, objects, our own shapes here, and we wanted to create the same sort of an effect here. We want to have different rotations for our objects or for our UVs here. So let's drop down an SDF shape. Let's just create a circle here. That should be fine. We'll do SDF to mono. Really should create a recipe for that as well. Let's make a copy of that. Let's maybe set this one to like a diamond and let's come in here actually. And let's just lower that size and we can do a transform 2D now. And let's maybe just move this over in the corner just something away from our sphere here. And then we can do a blend or an add. All that add node is, is just the blend set to the add mode here. So now we have our two objects here. We can take a, let's see, it is a UV map by ID, wire in, or actually, sorry, it's a connectivity first, a segment by connectivity. And then we'll wire in our add into the source here. We have some different IDs that are showing up now. We can wire that into our UV map by ID. And now we have a different UV map for each of our objects here. And we can come in here again and we can do our UV transform. Take this, wire this in and set our ID for this seed. And now we can randomly rotate these as well. And you can see we're getting some different rotations on this as well. So we can use all these different methods to help us to get some different things. And you could overwrite, probably I haven't tried it. You could overwrite the IDs here if you, for whatever reason, wanted to using this connectivity, or if you just forget uh, that the ID exists, you can use this method as well um, to, to create those. So, Lots of different ways that you can do some different things inside of COPS, but this is a great way to get some variation in, so in your textures. So things like bricks, you're going to use this a lot. That's why I said for the tile pattern, you're going to use this a lot. So you use that to generate some, some bricks that have different slopes and angles to them. You could use this for rocks, so you could create a much more complex shape going on here. You could stamp them all around. Um, using the stamp points if you wanted to, and then you could use this to generate some, some more randomness to their slopes, which could give you something kind of interesting. So play around with it and see what all you can come up with for it, but hopefully this has helped you out. I have a bunch of other videos on my channel that go over a bunch of different things inside of COPS, so make sure to check those out if you're interested. I also cover a bunch of other stuff inside of Houdini just in general, so if you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure to check out those videos as well. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.